Welcome to worship at First Baptist Church Brantford on this third Sunday in the season of Advent. And we welcome all who are joining us online. Thank you to all who are participating in our service today. And now, let us worship God. Friends, we are followers of a tradition that has been handed down through the ages and we join again today in the anticipation of the Advent season, a season of hope for the world, a time of peace with our neighbors, an opportunity for joy before God. Let us worship God, our Advent carol, Joy to the World.
This morning we light the third candle on our Advent wreath, the candle of joy. Everywhere people look for a sign of a new era, a time when the wilderness shall rejoice and blossom, a time when the hungry shall be fed, a time when the burning sand shall become springs of water, and all sorrow and weeping shall flee. The great news is that Jesus Christ came into the world to show us the way to joy. The candle we light today symbolizes the joy we have because God is with us, loving us, forgiving us, empowering us. Let us walk in the joy of the light of God. Our first lesson will be read from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, 14 to 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is in your midst. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is with you, the one who saves. He will take great delight in you. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you. I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in all the earth. At that time, I will gather you and bring you home. I will give you honor and praise when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. On responsive lesson, the words of, Psalm, of Isaiah 12, 2 to 6, as printed. I will praise you, O God. For though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For you, O God, are my strength and might. You show yourself my Savior. With joy, we will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to God and call on God's name. Make known God's deeds among the nations. Proclaim that God's name is exalted. Sing praises to God, whose work is glorious. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, you who dwell in Zion, for the Holy One of Israel is majestic among you. And reading also from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Thanks be to God for all these readings. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, traditionally called Joy Sunday. It is represented by a pink candle 
on our Advent wreath. This day signals a shift from a more reflective state of mind or frame of mind to a joyful tone, since we are past the halfway mark in this season of Advent. As the coming of Jesus draws nearer, our joy builds with anticipation of his birth. The name for this Sunday is taken from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. The Lord is near. Advent is a season of waiting, and we are called to be joyful as we await the coming of Jesus Christ. And indeed, our text today speak of joy. The prophet Zephaniah offers us glimpses of a hopeful future and calls us to rejoice and exult with all our heart. Isaiah reminds us of the ways God has delivered us, is delivering us, and will deliver us. He invites us to shout aloud and sing for joy because we shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And Paul strongly urges us to rejoice in the Lord always. But how does joy flow from these words of scripture to the heart with the suffering, loss, uncertainty, and state of our beautiful and broken world? How can we hear these words and rejoice? Joy is not the same thing as happiness. Happiness is a feeling that is often connected to what is happening to us or around us, or whether things are going well for us or not. It is circumstance-oriented. We are happy about something or someone. Joy comes from the inside. It is not something manufactured at will. It is not seasonal or situational. It has no life of its own. It is possible to experience joy in very difficult times. It is possible to know joy or feel joy in spite of grief and uncertainty. Joy can share space with other emotions, sadness, fear, anger, even unhappiness, happiness cannot. We may be tempted to think of joy as the absence of pain or sorrow. That is what sentimental visions of Christmas, seen in everything from advertising to classic Christmas movies, tend to do. They ask us to believe that true joy involves the absence of pain and suffering as problems are resolved and old enemies become friends just in time for Christmas. The word joy appears over and over again in the scriptures. It is rarely inspired by happy circumstances. More often than not, it is in spite of circumstances. In the midst of a lament, the psalmist sing for joy. Isaiah brings good tidings to people living in exile. When Paul wrote these words of encouragement to the Philippians, he was writing from a prison cell. Biblical joy is a state of being that finds its origin in the presence of God. God is the true author and giver of joy. Joy is a response to what God has already done and continues to do. It is gladness and contentedness flowing out of the wellspring of God's faithfulness and mercy. We cannot spend time in God's presence and not come away filled with joy. Christians believe that joy comes in the one who comes to us, 
Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the whole Christian story embodies this understanding. When we accept the good news of God's love for us in Jesus, we do so with the faith that God's love holds us, no matter the difficulties, even death on a cross. Friends, this has been a time of particular loss for many people. The pandemic has brought with it all manner of unexpected blows, upheaval, and uncertainty. The losses that we and the world have borne over the past 20 months are front and center in our minds. But losses extend in many other directions as well. In the death of loved ones, illness, unemployment, separation from family and friends. I believe that we in the church have an obligation to acknowledge the brokenness of the world, but also to go one step beyond and proclaim the promise that pain suffering and death do not have the last word. God, in his steadfast love, will not leave his people alone. God will enter into our suffering and bring us joy, joy that may not take away the experience of suffering, but will fill it with God's presence. The promise for which we wait is expressed in these words from the Gospel of John. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Christ is the light of the world, and no matter what happens, the light will not be extinguished. And if that light cannot be extinguished, then neither can joy. And so here we are on one of the shortest days of the year, the longest darkness. We believe that the light will always overcome the darkness. We believe in the miracle that is about to come into this world. As we watch and wait this Advent season, let us be witnesses of the light of Christ that in Christ, the light grows stronger. Let us live as people who believe that this joy and the child who brings it can transform our world. And let us rejoice, for the Lord is near. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We read, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Friends, the offering is an expression of stewardship and worship. Through our offering, we express gratitude for God's goodness and blessing, while acknowledging our willingness and joy in sharing in the work of God's kingdom. There are offering plates at the doors, and you're invited to place your offering at end of service. Let us pray for the offering. <coughs> joy is your gift, O oh God, the joy of giving, the joy of compassion, the joy of recognition, the joy of fellowship together. Bless these gifts which will convey the joy of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. We thank you that you are with us, guiding us and urging us forward as we continue to wait and watch for your coming into our lives on our journey through Advent. You have blessed us in ways beyond our imagining. We thank you that the origin of our joy is in your love and self-giving, made known to us in Christ Jesus. Teach us to be still, and to get in touch with that joy. Thank you for the ways you bring joy into our lives to those who are near and dear to us, and for the opportunities you give to us to bring joy to others. When we offer a helping hand, speak a needed word, give out of the abundance we have, or share the good news of the gospel, we share the joy you have given to us. Help us to be thankful for the joyful places and times in our lives. And when there seems to be no joy for us, may we know that you are with us in our pain and sorrow, that we might know your presence and trust that we will know the joy faith can bring. O oh God, we ask that your gifts of healing, faith, hope, and love would be with the people and situations we name before you now. Heal the brokenness of war and threat between nations and people. We pray for peace at home and abroad. Make all your people one in care and purpose. We pray for all who confront other types of loss for those overwhelmed with cares. We pray for relief for those suffering from prejudice or discrimination, rejection or ridicule. May they know your presence with them. We pray for those who are mourning. Bring your gifts of hope and promise to those who live with grief. Be present to those who are close to our hearts and thoughts but absent from among us today. Touch the sick with healing. We pray for those directly affected by COVID-19. We pray for all healthcare workers, researchers, scientists, and so many others that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. We remember all in essential services. We pray for those whose livelihoods are in peril, those without employment, who are fearful of what lies ahead. Help us to proclaim the power of your love for all. And we remember today the people in the United States as they struggle with the devastation of tornadoes. Comfort the injured and suffering. Sustain and uphold the people forever changed by grief and loss. And now in silence, we bring to you our most intimate concerns.
loving God, we pray that we will always be compassionate as we look upon the needs of humanity or look inwardly to our own needs. To celebrate your coming on that first Christmas and to herald your coming in every Christmas is to live by the faith that your grace is now present in the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us that can reconcile all nations, peoples, and persons. May we faithfully pray and wisely work for that day when all creation will echo back the angel's song of peace and goodwill. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final carol, Heart the Herald Angels Sing.
you forever. Amen. Welcome to First Baptist Brantford Sunday School. My name is Marv. Together, through prayer, story, and scripture, we will learn of God's word for us today. Let us begin by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today I'm going to read from Luke verses, chapter 1, verses 4 to 14, and then I will tell you a story which is based on that scripture lesson. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in cloths, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone, off, shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord, and this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. 
Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. Friendly beasts. Jesus, our brother, kind and good, was humbly born in a stable roof. And the friendly beasts around him stood. Jesus, our brother, kind and good. I, said the donkey, shaggy and brown, I carried his mother uphill and down. I carried her safely to Bethlehem town. I, said the donkey, shaggy and brown. I, said the cow, all white and red, I gave him my manger for a bed. I gave him my hay to pillow his head. I, said the cow, all white and red. I said the sheep with curly horn, I gave him my wool for his blanket warm. He wore, he wore my coat on Christmas morn, I said the sheep with curly horn. I said the dove from the raptors high, cooed him to sleep that he should not cry. We cooed him to sleep, my maid and I, I said the dove from the raptors high. Thus every beast, by some good spell, in the stable dark, was glad to tell of the gift he gave Emmanuel. The gift he gave Emmanuel. Let us pray. Dear God, as we wait for the birth of your son Jesus, Help us to be thankful for what we have and to be kind and helpful to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, wherever you go, God is there. So whatever happens, you are not alone. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.